Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Pillow, yeah. chair of the select board. I'd like to call this select board meeting for order a Monday evening, very hot Monday evening, by the way, August 8, 2022 at 7 p.m. I'm joined by Vice Chair Adam Dash. Good evening, Adam. Good evening, Mark. Member Roy Epstein. Good evening, Roy. Greetings, everybody. Greetings, everybody. Uh, Town Administrator Patrice Garvin. And Good evening. Assistant Town Administrator Jennifer Hewitt. Hello. Good evening. And we, are, we also are graced by a member of the press corps, Franklin Tucker. Was the only one in the audience tonight on a 105 degree day? I don't even remember a time when we at least had at least two or three people here. This is yeah. the first time I've been here. It's a fairly light agenda, that's why I think, because, uh, but thank you for coming. We appreciate the coverage. We really do. I mean, thank you. Franklin comes to all the meetings, ladies and gentlemen, by the way. He's terrific in terms of informing our community about um, this board plus actions we take, administration and school committee and others. You cover the school committee as well? Sports. And sports, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, we have a fairly, uh, surprisingly, um, not too robust an agenda tonight, Town Administrator. Uh, we have some community announcements. Uh, we will then have the Town Administrator's report, number of matters there. We will be discussing, uh, taking an, another vote on Porch Fest, right? Mm -hmm. um, a tree dedication vote uh, for 9-11, that's pretty cool. And then we're gonna have a little bit more of a discussion on uh, the use of opera funds, uh, particularly as it relates to, I think, the ice skating rink design yes. funds. Um, hopefully, the chief of police joins us. I don't know if the chief will be joining us live. Oh, he's expected to. And uh, is uh, Sean joining us yeah. live as well? well we will um, conduct the police chief, uh, Jamie McIsaac's performance review, go into executive session, briefly discuss matters with him, and then come out and vote to ratify uh, whatever this, this select board decides on a merit increase for. Uh, Terrific police chief. And then we have committee appointments, Energy Committee, Cable Television Advisory Committee, Council on Aging, Cultural Council, Housing Trust, Community Preservation Committee. And then we will go into um, executive session, but before we do that, we'll get select board committee liaison reports, because then we'll go into executive session and um, not return to open session. I think that probably makes sense. Um, we have a number of, we'll approve the minutes prior to going to the executive session as well. Uh, future meetings, um, potential topics is ongoing committee appointments. You think we'll be done by end of August? Or? I hope to be, but might bleed into. Okay, September. great. Um, we will have another regular meeting on Monday the 15th of August. Uh, I think this August 29th meeting, we're probably gonna defer, right? Because that was going to be the call center. Um, no, unless something pressing. Uh, my only concern is that looking at the calendar that uh, there's Labor Day and then we have another meeting and then suddenly we'll be at the end of September. So I wonder if we should actually get it done. Well, we can we can meet then, but but Steve Cirillo, who got his name right tonight, um, I think is out of town. Yeah, I know he's unavailable, but I'm just concerned that if we wait until he's available and we also have an open night for the meeting it'll suddenly be the end of september which is getting late so right you know what yeah i think you Should know we just got to start the discussion on the 29th i would recommend that because okay. I, I think we got his recommendation is pretty loud and clear and the report yeah. is self-explanatory so i yeah. think we can just move on adam what do you think you want to do that yeah. i agree with roy i don't think we need to see steve i've i i heard him yeah we can have him come back to a future meeting because again yeah. As I've stated, it's not to be, be the end of the discussion, it's the beginning. Yeah. So, um, okay. why don't we keep the 29th, Patrice, if that works for you? Sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, and the Chief's outside here. Come on in, Chief. Chief, leave the door open too, or do you want to keep it closed because it's quite cool. It's the air conditioning. Yeah, we're an open meeting. Okay, so with that, um, we have a number of committee uh, appointment needs, um, all of the committees that are list listed here. Uh, good evening, Chief. You can leave that door open. It's an open meeting, so we should leave it open. Although if the AC leaves, or maybe just, or just crack it so that it appears that it's open. We're trying to maintain some of the coolness in here um, after a 95 to 100. Did it hit 100 today? Oh, the AC also broke. Oh, it did? Oh, the AC broke, okay. Uh, Cultural Council, Disability Access Commission, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Implementation Committee. It's important to get that off the ground. Historic District Commission, Human Rights Commission, Information Advisory Technology Committee, the Massport Community Advisory Committee, the Belmont Planning Committee, Rec Commission, Structural Change Implementation Advocacy Committee. 
Vision 21 Implementation Committee and Website Renewal Committee. Wow, is that, is that it or is there more? Those are what we're looking for. Okay, all right. That's the only announcements I have this evening, unless my- yeah, a couple more. A couple more, oh, okay. I'm gonna put them on the screen. Um, oh, thank you. So, um, office hours, huh, okay. So office hours with the Belmont Light Department, who will be there? Uh, it was Wednesday, August 10th from two to four. Belmont Light will hold office hours on August 10th from two to 4 p.m. Um, if you have questions about your bill, want to learn how to reduce your electric usage and save money, come talk to Belmont Light representatives. Um, so I'm assuming Craig Smell and Spinelli will be here. Any members of the newly elected light board? I believe so. Okay. Um, it's cost is free, of course, um, or you, you can call 993-2970 or find us on MyRAC to register. So some folks have to register to attend. Okay, yes. thank you, Patrice. Yep, there's a couple more. Uh, understanding gun reform with the Belmont Police Department on Friday, August 12th at 1.15 p.m. Chief, that's great. Are you, who's conducting that? The Beach Street Center is pleased to welcome Belmont Police Chief James McIsaac for conversation discussing about the Supreme Court gun reform ruling, gun reform laws, and how it impacts Massachusetts. Do you have a couple minutes to just talk about that? Uh, with the mic or with the mic here? Sure. Just real brief. I mean, this is a fascinating topic. I think I'm out of town on the 12th which is this Friday, but just briefly at the mic here, if you want to just describe what this is about. I think that's really so, cool that uh, you're doing this. Chief James and Isaac, um, I was approached by the senior center about, they said they got some questions down there about how the recent Supreme Court decision, uh, what effect that had in Massachusetts. So what we've done is, um, as you know, you might not know, Massachusetts had a pretty good gun law, it still does. Um, but we, one of the things we would do is we would ask for three letters of recommendation, and um, they were, we would then ask why somebody wanted to have a handgun. And usually the, um, <clears throat> the answer was that it was for property protection. If it was for target shooting or something like that, you could give somebody, uh, you, you have a class A, which allows somebody to carry a gun concealed all the time. You could do a class B with limitations, meaning they could only take it to and from the firing range. Um, so what the Supreme Court did in effect was it eliminated that classification systems between an A and a B, a class A and a class B firearms uh, permit. And you no longer need to get the three letters of recommendation. It still is up to the police chief though in the, in the community if there's a reason that they find somebody's not suitable. Um, and we still have the statutory exemptions that prevent people from uh, obtaining a firearm, you know, if they were convicted of a felony. Okay. So you're going to be at the Beach Street Center this Friday at 1.15 yes. to discuss that further. Uh, Chief, Chief, how many handguns are in Belmont, do you think? It's a good question. I can so I could find out like that. I don't have it off the top of my head. But um, so what we do is we have a lot of people that move into town. And whether they're licensed in another community, they then notify us and they notify the community in the state that they've moved into Belmont. That's one way we get people who are licensed in town. We have people who move to town uh, who apply for a license. and. We do renewals and, you know, we, we manage it that way. I don't, I, I could have the number in, in the, off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, I don't have it. Great. Great, Chief. So, and, um, I'm sorry, well, I don't think I'll be able to attend, but uh, good luck with that. Right. It's great that you're doing that. Um, Metropolitan Waterworks Museum, Tuesday, August 16th at... Sorry. What time is that? <laughs> sorry, I'm going too fast. One fifteen p.m. That's fine. Tracy... Uh, Linbo Sylvia will present an illustrated lecture on the Waterworks Museum's current special exhibition, Fire and Water, an exploration of the Great Fire of Boston. Wow. What year was that? 1872. It says right up there. Oh, there it is. Okay. I didn't read all the way down. Fire, an exploration of the Great Fire of Boston, Fire and Water, examines how both the Boston Fire Department and water system struggled to keep up with explosive population growth in the 19th century Boston, tracing how exact how each department evolved before and after the Great Fire of Boston in 1872. Wow, we consider how and why this infamous event was such a crucial turning point in their development. Tracy Limbo Sylvia is the Director of Education and Visitor Engagement at the Metropolitan Waterworks Museum and served as the lead developer for the exhibition. Cost is free, call 617-983-2970 or find us on MyRAC to register. Yep. Is that it? One more. And then, oh, wow, Belmont Rec Department Council on Aging and Library presents summer movie series. Um, so it was fun tonight. Yeah, Paw Patrol. 
Paw Patrol, the movie, where, where are they held? Town Field. Town Field? Town Field. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't think I've been down there. Oh, Thursdays, July 7th through the 18th of August, 6.30 p.m., games, 8 p.m., ish movie. Full schedule and info. Uh, are there, is popcorn served as well? Refreshments, have you been down there, Frank? Yeah. Yeah, they have popcorn. Never been down there. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Unless uh, anyone else have any announcements? Adam or Roy? Nope. I'm okay. Uh, Paw Patrol. What's that? I'm satisfied with Paw Patrol. <laughs> Paw Patrol. What is that? I've never heard of that movie. I had a bunch of pets that enforced the law. If I had kids. Young kids. You young kids, you know what Paw Patrol <laughs> Okay. Uh, other than the topics uh, that I've outlined, are there any comments? Uh, we have a handful of town residents attending through Zoom. No one in the audience other than the press. Uh, any other uh, questions or comments from town residents other than topics uh, that we'll, we will be discussing? Okay, seeing none, Patrice. Sure, thank you. You're welcome. So I have included a reformed, reformatted, reformatted uh, bulletin. No, I actually like bulletin. that. I like the color too. You change the color. Yeah, Can this is uh, efforts done by my staff, uh, Mitch, uh, in particular. So it has just a bunch of board initiatives, some important dates uh, to be aware of as well as some community updates within the fire department, council on aging, and the public library. So uh, we will be sending this out and putting it online tomorrow. How is it distributed to all town meeting members? And, and is it on our town website yep, as it's well? on the town website. We distribute it to all town meeting members. This is a town clerk that sent it out to all mm -hmm. town meeting members. Okay, yep. great, thank you. It's become a, a useful vehicle to get information on. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second item I wanted to brief the board on is the veteran service officer. We um, recently had uh, the retirement of Bob Upton. Um, I'm happy to say that Bob Upton has reconsidered retirement um, and is coming back as the veteran service officer for the town of Belmont. He actually organized the Purple Heart ceremony that was held yesterday at the Veterans Memorial. So I guess welcome back, Bob, and uh, we look forward to continue to work with him. Yeah, that's great. I did talk to Bob, and you know, I guess that um, West Chin reached out to him and asked him what he was doing. And, uh, he really misses, he has such a passion for veterans, and so I, I'm thrilled to have him come back and serve yeah. with us. Well, that's yeah, great. Does great is this <clears throat> indefinite, or is he here for just for a term? No, indefinite until, until wow. he decides otherwise. Yeah, he was very busy in his retirement, and, and I think Wes and he were chatting, and, and um, Wes said, geez, we still haven't filled the position, and, and he expressed an interest. Yep. And, we agree. Yeah. He, he was terrific. He was great. Yeah. So that's We're great news. When does he start, Patrice? He's already started. Uh, actually, no, wait. He has. Effective, wow. okay. Well, he worked on the, the Purple Heart. I think it's effective August 15th, so next week. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And then finally, Bob. Yes, go ahead. Um, I included in your packet just an update on the uh, the planning board's efforts to uh, update the comprehensive plan. Uh, they're looking to um, start a comprehensive plan refresh committee. Uh, prior to COVID, we had reached out and, and applied for grants with the MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Uh, we were denied that grant, but subsequently we have reapplied and they are helping us work with not only the comprehensive uh, plan, but also the housing production plan. Uh, as the board may know, the housing production plan will expire next year so we w really wanted to get on top of that so that was really the priority that is up and running and we will be working uh, with the planning um, staff and the planning board and members of this planning uh, refresh committee uh, to update the con comprehensive plan so this is just a, a quick update as to where we are and where we're going gentlemen any questions well, I know in the cover memo it says that there's some overlap with the MBTA Communities Advisory Committee, so uh, I guess it would be helpful if some members of the uh, MBTA Community Advisory Committee also wanted to work on the refresh, otherwise it would be a very big group. Yes, so the comprehensive um, plan, it has elements, so it has economic element, development element, it has a housing element, it has um, planning elements, so we could absolutely um, work work within the structure of what that committee looks like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there have been a lot of uh, things that have happened since the since COVID sort of stopped the process, including the you know DE and I study report, the business study report, the Collins report, the housing production plan working group. So, some groundwork in a lot of areas has been laid while the sort of process of the new plan has been dormant. So, hopefully, that'll help. 
um, you sort of just take chunks of the plan that kind of already been done. So maybe we can drop that in and move this along. Yep. I think the priority was the housing production plan. Right. So not that confused by it, but so do we need to form? So there's some comments about a housing production plan working group. Yes. To help steer this progress. Mm -hmm. Then there is the comprehensive plan refresh committee refresh committee has that been formed no nothing I, there is some working group um with the housing production plan there is some internal staff and some advocates for affordable housing that are working on the housing production plan but but there's some some suggestion here by uh, robert hummel on how a cprc should be formed yes. we need to do that yes is that a board appointed committee we can make it a board appointed committee yes so Does that makes sense charge Hmm? Somebody drafting a charge? We have not yet. We, we This is just an update. We can draft a charge. This is really if the board wants to, to formulate a, a, a standing committee to work on, on the... Well, a comprehensive plan. plan, which include a component of that would be the housing production plan. And so com comprehensive plan refresh committee would be formed. But there's a housing production plan working group that's part of that or separate from it. So I'm sorry. I'm no, no, no. So, so to get the housing production plan up and running because yeah. that has a deadline and that's like has a time clock attached yeah. to it, we have an internal group working to kind of get that plan in place, okay. Okay. working with MAPC. Okay. Um, as that starts and starts to move along, we want to develop the comprehensive plan refresh committee that will be focused on the comprehensive plan. But also aware of the housing production plan because okay. it's separate. Well, the housing production plan so is this, separate. This started out as a housing production plan update or revision. Yes. Well, yes, you had to you have to re up it if you want to be able to apply for a safe haven, which we plan to do. So, once. so the comprehensive plan is really a separate project. Yes, they're two separate projects, but they overlap in in certain elements. Okay, but the but the initial. Uh, Priority is to get the housing production plan in order because the deadline is when? Next year. Next uh, May, I think. With, is the comprehensive plan more of a sort of vision for the community? Yes. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. So what's Vision Implementation Committee? I know that the selection of two of their members should be on this one. So back in 2019, they were the driving force to get this in front of MAPC yeah. PC for the grant, and then everything kind of just stopped because of COVID. Okay. Um, now they, they are continued to be a part of the process. Now that we have a planner in place. But at the time of, in 2019, we kind of had a part-time planner. Okay. So we should form this comprehensive plan refresh committee, it seems, mm -hmm. but you're saying we need also seed funding for it? No, we have a grant through MAPC. We already have been given mm -hmm. a grant. We've already been given because of COVID. No, that, that one we got denied. And then subsequently we applied oh, good. to one. Well, that's great, Patrice. Thank you. So we should form that, right, gentlemen, to move that yeah. forward? I mean, like I said, we haven't been sitting around since COVID started because of all the diversity, equity, inclusion, business study committee. Oh, I understand that. All yeah. those things have been happening, but we need to create this committee to pull everything together and get this done. Great. Okay. So, so we will we... bring you a charge at a, a, a later date. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Yep. That concludes my report. Okay, great. Thank you, Patrice. Yep. Uh, the next order of business is discussion of possible vote on request to use the town green a Porsche Fest event on September 10th, 2022. And Mary Bradley is here. Can we admit Mary? Yep. Event chair for Porsche Fest. Um, and this is a request to change the venue for this, correct? Yes, I'll let, I'll they were looking it. at. Good evening, Mary. How are you tonight? Okay, that's the. I'm well, how are you doing? I'm well, good to see you again. So we met in the last week or the week before, I can't recall, to discuss this and we agreed to, we approved the use of Winbrook, but things have changed. Perhaps you could describe what, what's taken place since. Yeah, so the question um, Please identify yourself, was Mary, like, Mary, please identify yourself. Oh, Mary Bradley, uh, anything else? <laughs> Ben Chair for the Porch Fest. Chair for Porch Fest. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, yeah, so when we uh, when we spoke last time, there was a question about whether or not we would be able to access electricity at Winbrook. Um, ideally, we'd like to be at Winbrook because there are already kids there and we're going to have children performers, so it seemed like a good match. But um, we can't mm -hmm. access electricity. Uh, the rec department doesn't have electricity there and the schools don't want to allow us to 
use their electricity. So um, the UU said that they would let us use electricity at the town green. So we'd like to, to, to pivot there. So everything will be the same. Um, we have it's closed, so we have a better sense of how long we'll be at town green. So we're, it, it would be 1.30 to 7, which includes cleanup and set up and clean up. That's on Saturday? That's on Saturday and the rain date's Sunday. And we spoke with the UU and they said that um, if starting in the afternoon, that's fine on Sunday. Okay, and, and, and is, it, is this um, um, town green sufficient for this event, Mary, big enough? Yeah, it'll be big enough. Um, I think the first year at Grove Street, we had about 500 people, but wow. next year PQ, we had far fewer and last year, the majority of people who were in the audience were already at Joey's Park, which was why we were thinking that would be such a nice place to have it. But I would think that you'd have a lot of folks show up for this on a Saturday in the afternoon, right? Yeah. Yeah, but we will also have porches going in the afternoons. So. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, you have any questions? I guess the question, Mary, is um, what hours do you need for setup and breakdown if we're going to approve this for Town Green? Right. So, so the performances will be from two thirty to six. So we're thinking one thirty to seven for our setup and breakdown. That's fine. We need a police detail there as well, or well, that, that raises a broader question, uh, Patrice. Of all the permitting issues that have been issues in the past regarding events on town property, is this subject to that, or has some arrangement been reached for things like? Uh, police details, insurance, and all of those factors that we discussed. Yeah. So, um, with the the talk, when we um, had the failed override, one of the things we we do was overtime for uh, DPW, and we've informed um, people that want to do things in the community, like have town day or or the races that, that they provide their own details and clean up and things like that. So, so Mary, have you had that uh, discussion with Patrice, or where does that all stand? Uh, yes, so we have a meeting scheduled for Thursday. We wanted to know where we were going to be, um, and Patrice has been invited. Rec Department has been invited. Jay Arcott from DPW, um, both the police chief and the fire chief um, are going to attend. So we're going to have a meeting where we're going to discuss the detail and cleanup and all. And um, and I've been in touch with the town administrator's staff about the insurance that we've purchased for this event. Okay, I guess, I guess my two concerns is that if we have requirements that they be followed, and secondly, that there just be a consistency across events, so. Adam, any thoughts? Yeah, no, I, mean, I think we have been consistent across the events. Um, I would move to approve the request for Mary Bradley and Porch, Belmont Porch Fest, Inc. to use the town green on September 10th, 2022 for Porch Fest event from 1.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adam Dash, aye. Uh, Mary, just before you leave, how many porches do you have signed up? Oh, <laughs> good question. Oh, my gosh. I would have to look. I think it's... Um, okay. 65 and 8. Oh, how many? Yeah. 65? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I can't think of the numbers right now because... Is, is the times, I mean, just, I mean, I, I know you advertise this, but is the times the same like most porches will have, you know, music in, from 2.30 to 6.30? Is that the case or is it generally the same times? Um, so the porches will be going from 11 until 5. Oh. Um, oh. And then the Palooza is going to be from 2.30 to 6. And Vice Chair Dash, I think, has a porch of these, right, Adam? Always, always have, have them this year. Yeah, no, they're all staggered, Mark, so that people can go to different. Yeah, I, I've been away the, this Saturday, but I'm going to plan to, I'll be down for the Wild Palooza, but maybe I'll come by Vice Chair Dash's porch he, Shoot, he's gonna, he has two really good bands right now assigned to yeah, I'm gonna send a great porch, he's sending uh, up the schedule soon cool so. i've got a great porch for an event like this i don't have a porch so but, uh, okay great mary good luck with that all right <laughs> thank Let's, you have a good night thank, thank you for your you time too. thanks bye-bye okay uh the next uh, um topic of discussion 
uh, is the uh, discussion of possible vote on request for a 9-11 tree dedication ceremony on September 11th, of course, 2022. And we have Joanna Tazoulis that will be joining us. I don't, yeah, there she is. Can you please admit her? Joanna, good evening. How are you tonight? Hello, Joanna. You need to unmute yourself. There Hi, you everyone. Sorry. How are you tonight? Hi, nice everyone. to see you. Good to see you. There you are. Nice to see you. Thanks for too. attending. Um, please nice. identify yourself and tell us what this is about, Joanna. Please. Sure. Just, just give me one second because I have to make the screen a little smaller. Hold on. Okay. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I'm zooming in from Ocean Park, Maine. It's 69 degrees here tonight. Sorry to uh, rub that in, <laughs> but it was hot earlier this week. Um, on to more serious business. Um, about one year ago. Please identify yourself, Joanna. Oh, so sorry, Joanna Juvelis. I'm a Belmont resident. So yeah. Where's where's Orchard Park, Maine? Uh, Ocean Park, Maine is where Orchard Beach is. I don't know if you're familiar. Oh, that's uh, yeah, I know where that is. Yeah, I, um, we go to Kenny Bunkport quite a bit. It's like two or three exits up from that, so it's gorgeous up there. Yeah, yeah. having a good time. Yeah. Um, about one year ago, I wrote a story for the Belmont Citizen Herald about the 20th anniversary of 9/11 and Belmont's response to the tragedy, which took the lives of three Belmont residents and nearly 3,000 other innocent people. Through my research with the Belmont Historical Society, I learned that a Norway maple tree was planted in memory of the victims of 9-11 at the corner of Moore and Pleasant Streets in front of the Belmont Public School Administration Building. It was donated by Hartney Graymont, and a groundbreaking ceremony was held for the tree on October 25th, 2001. When I went to see the tree in person, I noticed there was no plaque to identify its meaning and purpose. And through additional research with the town's former tree warden and help from Belmont resident Sinclair Weeks, who used to work for Hartney Graymont, I discovered there was a plaque made 20 years ago. It was just never installed. I then took it upon myself to make sure this plaque would finally be installed. And with the help of Robert Brown from Brown and Hickey Funeral Home and the Belmont Historic District Commission and several Belmont employees from the town administrator's office, public works, facilities and the planning department, the plaque is now mounted on a stone and has been installed next to the tree. I mean, can you believe how many people it took to get this thing to happen? Well, it's incredible and it's so, unfortunate it's 11 years later. Like, uh, uh, 20, 20, almost 20, 20, 21 years later, right, exactly, wow. So I'd like to have a dedication ceremony for the tree and the okay plaque on Sunday, September 11th at 10, 28 a.m., which is when the second tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. I, too, lost a family member on that day. Oh, I'm my so cousin, sorry. My oh. cousin, John Katsimatidis, who was very special to me, he was a bonds broker for Cantor Fitzgerald, which oh, yeah. is located in the first tower of the World Trade Center that was struck. He celebrated his 31st birthday on September 5th, 2001, just six days before the attack. And that was the last time I spoke to him. And I want to thank my New York family for tuning in tonight, especially John's sister, Anthula. I would like to invite the entire Belmont community to this ceremony on Sunday, September 11th, as well as town officials, family members of the three Belmont, res, uh, Belmont victims, and the living select board members who were there for the original groundbreaking ceremony for the tree about 21 years ago, Anne Marie Mahoney and Senator Will Brownsberger. And I hope the select board will vote in favor tonight of making this a town event, which I'll help plan and promote. Thank you for your time and consideration this evening. Well, Joanna, first of all, very sorry for your loss. And I know Kendra Fitzgerald, I think it was the 95th floor of Tower One, because um, um, when I, I worked for the Lake at the time, I remember that. So that's very sad. So very sorry for your loss and your family members that are in attendance this evening. And of course, the, the, the folks that lost their lives from the town of Belmont, it was a terrible day for this country. Um, thank you for doing this. And, and it's unfortunate that there wasn't a plaque that was put in place. There was a dedication on that day, as you say, 21 years ago. 
not that we've forgotten about it. No one has forgotten about it. September 11th, of course, 2001. But now we can sort of revisit that. So we're more than I'm more than happy to support this. And uh, is there more that we can do as a town? To, to, I know you invited us to this event now, Patrice. So um, I'm sure at the time proclamations were read or is there more that we should be doing as a community to rededicate this tree other than attending the ceremony? Do you want to, you're planning the whole thing? Yes, and I think there was a flyer up on the screen. Did you put the flyer up on the screen? Yeah. So, Joanna, what else can we do? I mean, uh, we're happy to read a proclamation. Make you know, well, who else should we ask to attend? Uh, police and fire personnel. Who else? I think number, that would be great. Um, well, the number I, of public safety personnel lost their lives that day as well, of course. Yeah. Right, and I and I do want to have. Um, I'm going to try to maybe get some of uh, some students involved. I'm gonna be talking. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's very early in the school year, I'm gonna see what I can do. And definitely want to reach out to the family members of yes. the Belmont victims and, and try to get them to come and see if anybody wants to stay a few or say a few words. I know a lot of them still live in the town. And um, it never gets easier to want to, to almost twenty one. The decision on, on Pleasant and more, and I'm sorry I'm ignorant to this well, why was that decided for those for the corner of those that street? Is there a particular reason? Well, um, Anne Marie is on tonight. I don't know if she knows <laughs> if she can tell us why. No, that. Sorry to put you on the spot, Anne Marie. So uh, maybe Hartney Grandma picked it. I'm not sure. Anne Marie, if you want to join and sort of give us some background on this, thank you, Anne Marie. Good evening, Anne Marie. How are you tonight? Sorry to put you on the spot here. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> Always an adventure here. Um, as as Joanna mentioned, at the time, I honestly don't remember why that spot was chosen, except that it buildings, you know, the center of town. It was right. a lovely area with grass and other trees, and it seemed like an appropriate place. Um, I'll also note that one of our guests that day for this <laughs> was Bob Stretch Foley, um, Major right. General. Uh, he was on active duty at the time. West Point graduate and a Medal of Honor winner from Belmont. Um, so that's what made it at the time very special, among other things. Uh, I do know that police and fire were involved at that time in the dedication. Uh, but no, I have no definitive reason why that okay. space, except that it is very prominent on Pleasant Street and among the historic buildings. Well, thank you for having done that. God bless you, Anne Marie, um, and your colleagues on the board at the time uh, for having your, um, I guess, recognized this awful day in, in our country's history. You know. Yeah, it really I'm is happy the to only. Um, again. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Don't but it really is the only town memorial. There are other memorials, like the families have done benches, and yep. I know the Garden Club did something, but this really is the only. Uh, town okay. memorial that I know of. For All now. right, so Joanna, let let us know what more we can do. I'm happy to sort of have a chat with you, and I'm sure you'll talk to Patrice as well about additional things that we can do that day. Thank you so much. I really, I Mr. really Chair, appreciate it. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move to approve the request for the town of Belmont to host a tree dedication ceremony, the corner of Pleasant and Moore Streets in memory of the victims of 9-11 on Sunday, September 11th, 2022 at 10.28 a.m. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adam Dashai. Do you want to take care? Good to see you. Enjoy the rest of the week in Orchard Park, Park Maine. Is for sure uh, it's cooler. It's cooler there, and you know if you go in that water up in Maine. Um, oh, you definitely cool off. Oh, absolutely. Yes, even in August, the water's still cold. Yeah, but it's beautiful up there. So I I'll love. I'll see you when I get it. back. Thank you so much. Take care, Joanna. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. Bye bye. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, Patrice. Uh, this, so the next topic is discussion of possible vote to approve the use of American Rescue Plan funds. Uh, we're going to admit uh, Mark Haley. Um, do we should remember? Why don't you stay a minute? since you're also on the um, the rink building committee as well. And is there anyone else from the rink building committee here? No. Is, is, is Tom Caputo on, uh, Mark? I don't see Tom, uh, Mark. Um, was he? Was there an intention for him to join this evening? No, oh, if he's not on, that's fine. Yeah, and we're, we're, we're running a few minutes behind, so it's not like we're early for this. Do you need him on or? No, no, I don't know. Okay. Well, Emory's here as well, and, and uh, we've chatted about this. So if she had, maybe perhaps she can provide some further thoughts on this as well. So 
Um, you want Mark to speak first, Patrice? Or yeah, Mark, want, I think Mark, if you want to go. Okay. Mark, identify yourself and please. Uh, yes. Mark um, Haley, Precinct yeah. 6, uh, Chairman of the Mis Municipal Skating Rink Building Committee. And as we talked, when you put this on the ballot to uh, for a debt exclusion in November, we talked about we had money from the state to do design, but we would need additional funds to get us through October, maybe into early November. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight is the design development or the design of the of the entire rink by the architect is going to be between two and a half and three million dollars, which we don't want to do today because we want to wait until the debt exclusion is in fact passed. But what we'd like to do is have an interim fund that'll get us to sometime in, I would say, mid to late September, early October. And Mark and Patrice and myself and, and Anne Marie and Tom talked today about that, would be requesting a fund of about $300,000 to continue the design, to move it forward, to get to a better number that we can then present to you as the select board sometime in, and Mark agreed that sometime in mid-September to late September at the latest to really firm up the numbers we have currently have on the table. So and right now, just, just, so we're, just so we're all clear too, is one of the criticisms we had when we were at the select board's meeting is the town did not feel we were providing enough transparency. We are now setting up to have public forums one, the first one will be on the 17th of August, and we'll do one, one a month until we get to the debt exclusion vote in November. And uh, Anthony from our committee is setting those up and we're on our way. But we meet essentially on a weekly basis to try to push this thing forward. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, so you, you think, we talked earlier today, so how much is left from the initial appropriation from the state okay so the original appropriation was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars right and looking at the numbers and i don't have invoices from uh ted galante architectural studios for the past month nor cha but i estimated what those would be and it leaves us with a between 90 and ninety five thousand dollars in that account which was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to start so the $300,000 will give us about $400,000 to move the, this design forward. And believe me, we will not spend it if we don't have to, but the architect is saying he needs to bring on his sub consultants, the structural engineer, the mechanical engineer, and we're meeting with a mechanical engineer on Wednesday to go through what the mechanical pieces are, because that's where I, I think our weakness is in our cost estimate, is I don't have a lot of details on what that is we've done square foot cost of what that would be, but I want more details to really drill down into what the cost really will be. And that's what this money is going to be used for. Okay. Emory, that for that's, you all? that's helpful, Mark. Any further thoughts, Emory, that you have to add to that? No, just as Mark noted, you, you know, on the face of it, it sounds like a lot of money for, you know, a, a month or six weeks of work, but we're at the point where Ted does need to bring on all these outside people to get the information we need, you know, on the parking, on the fields that everyone is looking for, as well as on the building. And so for us to have a really good, valid number to start advertising for the debt exclusion, we really need to do this and do it now. And, and if I can add to that, Anne-Marie, a lot of people ask the question, Ted is bringing on a civil engineer to design the parking facilities that, that we're talking about, and he's bringing on a landscape architect to design the fields. So those two pieces, whether or not the rink ever goes forward or not, they'll always be able to be used. So it's it's it, it's money that the town is going to ultimately have to spend, but we want to minimize the risk to the town until the debt exclusion passes. And what we talked about this morning, Mark, too, is if the debt exclusion passes, the debt exclusion or the money that's given the building committee would be then, any money we spend now would be transferred back to the town to re reimburse the AR money. Right. 
Yeah. So if it, if it was a successful vote in the fall, Mark, what you're saying is that this was skating ring building committee would look to reimburse the community, the town, for the spend down of three hundred thousand dollars. That would be correct, Mark. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, any questions or comments? Yeah, it makes it makes sense to me. I, uh, three hundred thousand is probably a bit higher than is really needed, but you can't afford to run out of money at this stage. So I think the plan makes sense to return whatever remains. Adam, I was a little concerned about spending money prior to the uh, the vote because if the vote goes down, then the money's for naught. Um, I, am, I do appreciate Mark's point about the fields uh, design being useful. I think that that's true. I had not occurred to me. I'm not sure if the parking is useful. If the rink isn't done, then I'm not sure that parking layout really is relevant that was going to go with that. Um, I'm glad the public forums are happening. Glad to hear that. Um, I, I mean, I was comfortable with the range on the price that was put up before. So I'm not sure we don't need to design everything prior to the vote. We need the voters to say whether they're in favor of the project or not. And we've got the money, uh, I believe a range that, you know, if I didn't think the range was was set, I wouldn't have voted to even put it on the ballot. So I was comfortable with that. I'm just, I'm concerned 300,000 was a little higher than I was expecting when I got this packet. And it's, a, and when you look at the ARPA money, which we're gonna be needing to balance FY24, do you wanna take the risk and spend the money on this? That's the concern. Um, and do we need to do that now? Obviously, if this passes, you know, not a problem. But if the um, if it doesn't, then we've you know we've already put ARPA money into the rink and into the library, and um, we're not putting extra money into the library from ARPA. So are we? Why are we putting extra money into ARPA for the rink? I guess is the question here. Mark, Mark Haley, am I am I correct that the three hundred thousand is probably a Pretty generous estimate because if you have a hundred thousand remaining the original amount, that will take you into September already. That that, that would be correct, uh, Mr. Epstein. Is and and Adam, I don't think the rink has ever gotten any ARPA money prior to this. We are we've been working on the grant from the state, not ARPA money. Well, it's the state ARPA money, but it's still the, okay. Still the ARPA money. Yeah. The. Um, I mean, the concern is, I, I guess, I don't know that you need, uh, you know, we've done this with other projects. You don't need to have the entire thing, you know, completely done in order to go to the ballot. You just need to have the, the price range and what you're providing and the general features of it and where it's going to go and sort of this general size of it. You don't need to actually, and I understand that part of the project should have passed is to lay out the fields and all that, but I don't know that you necessarily need to do 100% of the work now. I, I don't know if there's a way to do it for a lot less than the hundred would be nice. If you don't think you'll need the whole hundred, I'd rather do less of, you know, bind less of the money yeah. now. And then we're all, obviously we're always around to put more money in if necessary. Uh, we, could, we could, we could take that approach Adam, if you're not comfortable. So Mark, maybe you explain again, you know, Patricia, I'd like to get your thoughts on this as well. Exactly. The, you have 90 around almost a hundred grand from the grant from the state. They it was opera funds. Of course, yes, agreed. Um, the additional three, um, here it is August 8th. We have August, September, likely 60 days to sort of fine tune and get to a more detailed estimate here. Would we need the full three? Could we do a portion of that now? And if, if things seem to be getting, or do you want the full three? Uh, you know, I think if you, if you could authorize the three and we will keep the select board informed of what we're spending and we'll try to bring it in at less than that. But when you start to add all of the sub consultants that Ted is re requiring or re requesting. And I'm requesting to make sure we have the systems in place at least. And it's not, and Adam is not designed, believe me that this is, but it's more than what we have today. Today, we have a square foot cost of an ice, ice rink. I want to look at some piping diagrams. What is the mechanical systems that we're buying or potentially buying? And those are the kind of things that cost money. The other piece, I want to make sure that the structural engineer agrees that we can reuse the bents that everyone's talking about. And that is a decision that needs to be made because that's a cost de delta. Does that make sense to you, Mr. Dad? Yeah, I think if you're going to the public and you're saying things like, I'm going to recycle something, I think you need to know that you are. I agree with that. If you're, however, details of 
you know, piping and all the public when they're voting isn't going to care about the mechanical no. systems at all. They want to know how big's the building, where's the building, how much ice does it have, how many locker rooms, and what's the general cost of it, and how's it going to be programmed? Is it 24 7? Is it 12 months out of the year? That kind of thing. How much parking does it have? That yeah. sort of thing, I think people need, and what to clad with, and is it going to be, you know, uh, you know, any green energy? component as far as the rest of it i agree i I agree with that mr dash and that's exactly one of the other pieces i want to do is what is the facade of this and what is the energy efficiency of that facade how much insulation and make sure we have that in the cost estimate those are the kind of things i want to make i want to obviously we want to have an accurate cost estimate the last thing (laughs) would be to have a vote and then not have enough but is is three three hundred thousand just seems like an awful lot for just a rank I think that would piece of this, and I, I appreciate what Adam is saying, but I think we all have to remember that now we are being scrutinized very carefully by the citizens. And we hear a lot of accusations being thrown around about transparency and detail, and you're not giving us all the information, and you're trying to slide this through. So I think we're trying to anticipate that and have numbers that are as firm and accurate as possible. Um, and so it is a trade-off. It, it costs money to do that. You know, if we don't do it, then we get the accusations thrown at us. So, you know, it's kind of a tightrope walk. And, and I think this is a medium path that we're trying to take right now to get enough information to satisfy people that we know what we're doing, but not so much that it's it's too much money to be spending at this point without the debt exclusion. No, I appreciate that. So obviously, Amory, my, my goal here is to try to spend as little as possible prior to a vote. But still, I understand we have to spend something to give people enough comfort to vote for it. So if there's some number less than 300 that gets us there, I'd be happier. Or if it's 100 and then in a month you need 100, we can talk again or something like that. I don't want to hold it up. But I also, if you're saying you don't need, may not need the whole amount of money, then I don't, why should we appropriate the, the whole amount of money? Well, right because, because there'll be very little time left if they happen to run out. Uh, towards the end of October, there may not be enough time to appropriate more money to finish the work. I think this is like many of the projects in the Capital Budget Committee where you're basically building in a cushion with the expectation that there'll be a turn back at the end just to avoid um, impeding the project as it goes along. Uh, and, you know, in a perfect world, I, well, I, let me say in a different environment, uh, a general representation that the number could be about 30 or 33 million dollars maybe would work but i'm just i actually share Anne marie's concern that um the atmosphere is such that i think uh, we have to err on the side of providing as much information as possible and this has become a cost of doing business well, i would know we're meeting five out of the next six weeks so it's not like we're going to hold them up if they run out of money or anything like that. Did you hear any thoughts on this? Yeah, the only thing I wanted to add is what we talked about this morning was the fact that um, regardless of whether or not the debt exclusion passes or fails, some of the work that Ted's doing is going to help us down the line. The Whitefield House came up. Uh, the Whitefield House is, is in need of um, being raised and at some point will need to be addressed uh, by the town. And some of the work that Ted's doing will help um, facilitate that as well as the playing fields and the parking. So this money will, I think, go to good use if, if, it, if it is needed. Okay. Um, I think before we vote, we have one hand up. I'm happy to admit. Um, I don't know, Mark, if we have any comments. Um, I'm happy to see if Lisa Fargoli has any comments or questions. Lisa, I'll admit you and Billy Innocent as well. So we have two hands. Can we please admit? I don't know why I can't admit them tonight. This money doesn't Lisa's there. She should have done. Hi, thank you, Lisa Pagoli, Precinct 4. Um, I just have to agree, I was going to say, Adam said it all for me. I think that that that's way too much money for something you have no idea whether it's going to pass or not. We're putting so much money into these things that we really can't afford. And now more money, as Patrice is saying, can help with the fields. I thought the fields were included in the $295 million debt exclusion. And now the schools going to would be getting benefiting again while the roads are going down and the rest of us who don't participate in that stuff absolutely get nothing for services. Um, so I think it's something to think about. That's a lot of money to be throwing out for something that unless it seems like it's a done deal. Um, so I'm really concerned about that. We're really not in a place to be just throwing money out and seeing if it's going to come back or not. 
Thank you. All right, thank you, Lisa. Billy Anderson, Bill, I just admitted you. Thanks. Please, Bill, I think you've been in, you were a minute. He was, that was my bad, sorry. Hang on, I'm gonna admit you again. Well, go ahead. So I will announce myself again. Go ahead, Bill, <laughs> please announce yourself. Yes. Bill Anderson, Precinct 2. Um, you know, I don't know, this is, um, I understand the concerns on both sides, but um, it seems like we have to move forward somehow with pre-development costs. Perhaps it can be, and I don't know if this overcomplicates the process over the next couple of months, but perhaps the, the amount could be um, approved based on sort of a uh, milestones uh, that Mr. Haley could present that what's expected to be completed over the next, you know, be the end of this month and then into September. Um, you know, and as those milestones are completed, then perhaps those um, the funds can be distributed so that it, it may allay some of the fears that, um, you know, we're yep. not going to know where we are with the costs until until it's too late. That's just an idea. Thank you, Bill. Hey, Mark, well, perhaps uh, just to follow on to Bill's comment, less, you know, maybe it's milestones. I'm supportive of this. I mean, Adam, I, I hear your concerns. I really do. I think 300,000 plus another hundred. It's likely an overstatement of what the need is, but you know why not just provide it so that because we have a short window here, and I'd rather have a more refined estimate presented to the voters um, for the fall, and you know in light of that as well, providing additional information around the tax impact. So, Mark, would it be possible if this is approved tonight to get a report? I mean, you guys are meeting weekly, right? That is correct. Get a report. Uh, well, you don't report to us first of all. You report to the moderator. It's a building committee appointed by the moderate. So you have no reporting obligation to us, but in light of uh, the fact that we do approve these funds, would you would you be comfortable with reporting back through Patrice the spend of, spend down in those funds and what they're being utilized for? And then we can, at our next meeting, next few meetings that Adam pointed out we have, we can sort of just really free, um, you know, provide that information to the general public. No, I, uh, Mark, I, I agree with that completely. I want it to be totally transparent and I, could report back to you on a bi-weekly basis or a monthly basis, because typically I'm going to get uh, invoices on a monthly basis, but I can ask both CHA and Galanti mm -hmm. Architecture Studios to give me an update on their costs on a bi-weekly basis, and we can keep Mark, track of these costs. Does that Mark, make sense? thank you, because I, I was going to ask you if that was possible, because when even when somebody is on the monthly billing cycle, by the time the invoices are prepared and come in, six weeks can go by. So that that's correct. So what, what we'll do is we'll get a projection from them on a biweekly basis and we'll report to the town moderator and to the select board and Patrice, of course. Yeah, I, I, Mark, thank you. Uh, so, Mark, I think that'd be good because it, it accomplishes two things. One is it does address the concerns expressed this evening about is it too much money and should we wait for actual authorization to move forward with the string for a successful debt exclusion vote that we hope for um, and addresses the point that it's not just not allocating or appropriating which the select board has the authority to do with offer three hundred thousand dollars and okay well what was that used for not not suggesting that it wouldn't be used in an appropriate way mark of course but at least it sort of addresses the points raised about the need to understand what the spend is for. So reporting back to us and we'll make it visible. Patrice yeah. can report out uh, at, our, at our subsequent meetings on the matter. And if we're able to, to agree to that, then I would support the 300 grand. Mr. Chairman, I suggest we do 200,000 and then when we get the first report, we can see where they are. And if they need the other 100, we could take it up at that time. I, I, I don't think we have the luxury of time for that. Honestly, well, let me ask you this question because I think that's a fair compromise. Actually, if Mark, if so, we're, we're we are going to meet. We're meeting Monday, so that's certainly not enough time to sort of understand where things are. But we are meeting on the 29th of August. We just agreed to do that. You know, primarily to the to get. We're meeting on the 22nd of August. I mean, we don't we can do this in two weeks. We're meeting. We're meeting. Um, I mean, on the 15th and the 20th. No, we're not meeting on the 22nd. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. No, we're not. I'm away. You guys can meet if you want. But, oh, did, uh, that, did that meeting come off the calendar? Yeah, I came off. Adam. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm vacationing that week. So. We can add it to the 29th. So we have the 15th to 29th and the 12th. So, Mark, let me ask you this question. If we um, compromised on, you have 100 grand, close to 100, 
from the state grant plus another if we authorize 200 i mean you wouldn't spend down 300 between now and say oh, 29 that, would you? that that would that would work to get us under under get these sub consultants under contract uh and, and mark would it take you to the 29th or would it could it take you to the 12th of september i'll, I'll have that discussion but hopefully it'll take me to the 29th all right, so so Adam, that's a fair compromise. I'm willing to accept that. Why don't we authorize 200 grand, and on the 29th, you'll report back to us the either the utilization of those funds or the intended utilization. And if you need the other hundred, um, and it's clear what the reasons for the other hundred is, then I would support the additional hundred. You okay with that? Where is not a uh, well, I don't think that. I just it would be unfortunate that the spigot ran dry, but uh, I'm clear, clearly if we acted quickly, then 200 plus a supplement if it was needed would work. We just have to be sure we move quickly. So again, Mark, let me ask you one more time. You have 90 plus thousand or close to 100 grand from the state grant. Getting another 200, well, that'll take you, um, it's the 8th, right? So the 29th is three weeks away. That'll take us good a good portion into September, and I'll confirm that. Okay, so on the 29th, you'll report back on utilization of the 200 plus the remaining spend down of the state grant. And then at that point, if you need the additional 100, you have my support for that. Thank you. Okay, let's do that. Let's, let's be unanimous, gentlemen, right? And sure. agree that you'll report back to us on the 29th. Um, certainly, Monday the 15th is not sufficient enough time a week from now to give us that information but mark we're here to support this we we want to uh, i think to Marie's point which i completely agree with we want to be to the extent possible as detailed as possible in terms of what we report out to the community on this build and the more refined it is and i mean i know it's not going to be completely re, you know to the completely designed but the more refined we can be on the on the expected cost and to inform the residents of the community about that, I think the better off we're going to be on it. I, and I think Mr. Chair totally allows agree with that. This, and also Mr. Okay. Chair allows this board to exercise oversight over the process. Yeah, that's fine. So why don't you go ahead and make the motion then for 200. Yeah, I would move to appropriate $200,000 from the American, American Rescue Plan funds for purpose of refining the overall cost of the ice skating rink in advance of the November debt exclusion vote. Second. All in favor? Aye. Adam Dash, aye. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, continue Thank the great you. work, Emory. Thank you as well. Continue the great work on behalf of the town. We appreciate it. Take care. Okay. Um, okay, next up is the police chief performance review. Chief, you want to join us here along with sure. Director of Human Resources, Sean Healy. Thank you for coming in tonight, both of you. How are you, Shauna? Good, how are you? Well, let's just... Thank you. All right. All right, so, uh, Sean. Yeah, your picture taken, too. Did you take pictures of us? Or are the only pictures you've taken? I don't take any pictures of her. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, Shana, please. Uh, yep, Shawnee Healy, Human Resources Director. Um, we're here for Chief McIsaac's uh, annual performance review. Uh, Chief McIsaac was assigned with doing a self-evaluation, which was provided to the town administrator, uh, Patrice Garvin. Patrice completed her, her portion of the review, and then the board members received uh, Chief McIsaac's self-review, as well as Patrice's remarks and uh, ratings. And then each board member had the opportunity to rate Chief McIsaac in uh, eight different categories. So the categories included personal characteristics, professionalism, public relations and communications, town administrator support and relations, community leadership, organizational leadership slash uh, personal management, uh, financial management and planning and organization. The uh, overall combined uh, average rating for his performance re review came out to a 4.58. And then the overall rating at the end, each board member and, and uh, the town administrator were able to just provide an overall rating for the performance review. And that average came out to a 4.875. In addition, the board and uh, the town administrator were able to provide comments. Um, so if you'd like, uh, Chair, I can read the- Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, just, to, just on the rating, I mean, all three members of the board rated you five, but you, uh, the town manager gave you four or five, so that's the 4.875. Have you seen this evaluation? Yes, I have. Okay, so you, you're aware of that. All right, I didn't know whether you did. Yep. 
Um, so I'll go through and read the overall comments from each board member and the town administrator. Um, so a Adam say stated that uh, recognized strengths for Chief McIsaac included community relations, making the public feel better about Belmont's police force in the face of national police issues, being open and honest with the select board and creating a five-year plan and looking ahead. Areas of improvement, budget prioritization as all, is always a concern. The need to leave civil service and to diversify the police force is an, is an important near-term goal. In overall comments, the chief has been a pleasure to work with. He instills a confidence in the Belmont police force, which is hard to do these days when national public opinion of the police is low. He is honest and open as well as publicly visible. His long range view of the department is important and refreshing and he will need to continue forcefully leading the process to diversify the police force. Uh, for Roy, he, he for recognized strengths, he said, Chief McIsaac is a model for a modern police chief. He has made BPD both effective and passionate and has spearheaded policies and community outreach to deepen public confidence in the work of the department. He brings a unique balance of experience, calmness, and humor to a host of challenging management issues. I share his belief that exiting civil service will assist greatly in recruiting new officers and helping the department deliver high quality service in the face of ever increasing fiscal constraints. In areas of improvement, now that COVID is largely under control, I would like to discuss with the chief some of the other proposals he included in his presentation to the board when we interviewed him. I am also interested in plans for the department's IT operations to make it most productive for day-to-day -day operations and data analysis and to make sure that they are secure against any hacker attacks. In overall comments, Chief McIsaac has been tireless in his devotion to the department and the town and accountability to all residents. He is a tremendous asset and I look forward to him for serving for many years. Mark for recognized strengths stated that uh, the chief is a strong leader with, within our community and has worked hard to improve the image of the BPD within town, which has resulted in the residents of the town having a high degree of confidence in the department. Areas of improvement, I would recommend that he works closely with the TA and the finance director in developing a three to five year financial plan that aligns with his five-year strategic plan and addresses the needs within the BPD. And overall, the chief is committed, is a committed professional who operates with a high degree of integrity and honesty. He has provided strong leadership with the BPD and has enhanced the morale with the department. He is one of our best department heads. Patrice, for recognized strength, said the chief understands the qualifications and skills needed to be an effective police chief in the town of Belmont. The chief is always available and communicates what is happening in the community with all stakeholders. The chief continues to educate himself on policing on a local, state, and federal level. The chief is a leader in the community and advocates for his department. Areas of improvement, given the fiscal challenges of the community, sometimes it's easy to lose sight of the larger picture and to solely focus on your department. I would like all the departments to see where we are, uh, one cohesive unit that succeeds together. Overall comments, I enjoy working with the chief and look forward to working with him in the future. So that's just the, um, a summary of, of the performance review. Um, so I don't know if anybody wants to make any comments or you want. Well, I just asked the chief whether he has any comments and um, I think you've done great work for our department and obviously I think uh, you've contributed in a very positive In the community, I have great, I always hear great feedback about your ability. To our residents, particularly in light of, you know, what we've gone through the last three or four years and uh, public safety within this country. And I think you know, you're a model for not only uh, say, but also for the country in terms of how you handle things in a very positive way, Chief, so thank you for that. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for the positive feedback. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit, not, you know, they may make everybody better, but also the citizens. 
speaking to me um, last year with the LGBT, LGBTQ plus group. And she had heard that somebody had a transgender policy out in Western Massachusetts, asked me if I would look into it. Um, you know, I contacted the chief, you know, one thing led to another. Next, you know, we had a group uh, from the from the LGBTQ plus community in Belmont in our station developing a policy. And that's the kind of things that, you know, that wasn't my idea. But, uh, you know, being able to facilitate that kind of work and everything is, you know, it's, it's really big and uh, it just speaks well of our community, uh, you know, government organization here and um, the Belmont Police Department as a whole. Thank you. Gentlemen. I think, I think our comments, uh, our comments and our rating, uh, Chief uh, State, all you need to know. I mean, we speak, think very highly of you, and I think a 4.875 average is an extremely high rating, and it's well-deserved. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Chief, for your ongoing service for our community. It's not an easy job. You know, having lived with a police chief for, for years, I uh, realize the stress that it puts on your shoulders and sure your family as well. So God bless you for the role that you serve within our town. All right, we're going to go, how are we going to do this? Because Adam, you're remote. Um, we have the link. We have the link, so we'll call you up there. So we're going to go into executive session uh, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, our chief of police, or to conduct collective bargaining actions our contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Do I have a motion to go into the session, session for stated purpose? Yes, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Adam Dash, aye. You have to do a roll call. Yep. Mark Plow, aye. Roy Epstein, aye. Okay, we will be back, ladies and gentlemen. I love the technology. Okay, we're back. Are we back? You're back, Mark. Okay, uh, we are back. Uh, um, do I have a motion in live session? Do I have a motion to leave executive session? So moved. I, I second that the camera angle is fixed on the Zoom. No. Yeah, Roy's not in the picture here. I see him. I see half of him. <laughs> I better have. Uh, your left half. Six. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> A little bit too focused, for God's sakes. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I think zooming in on her. Okay. I uh, need to vote the motion. Do I have a second? All in favor? Adam Dash, I. Roy Epstein, I. Mark Pillai. Okay. Uh, we uh, met in executive session to discuss um, the potential merit in increase for our the chief of our police department and uh, uh, director of human resources will report out on that deliberation. Great. Uh, Shauna Healy, human resources director. Uh, the chief McIsaac's contract was uh, due for a cost of living adjustment, which he received on July 1st, uh, 2%. That brought his salary on July 1st to $195,182.01. Uh, the board discussed in the executive session to provide a 2.5% merit increase uh, retro to July 1 of 2022. That 2.5% will bring Chief McIsaac's salary to $200,061.56. Um, so they'll vote that uh, in the public session. And um, that was based on his overall evaluation of, um, yep, so, of 4.875, correct? Yep, so that's based off of his performance evaluation. There was discussion about. Um, uh, about a market adjustment, uh, looking at comparables. The town is currently in a market, uh, a paying classification study with uh, human resources services. And um, that study is should be con completed uh, by the end of this year. Once that study is done, um, it will be presented to the board and they'll be able to review um, review that study and put in- Working conditions for all of our for all, employees. Yep, for all- Chief and others as well. Yep, non-union staff and our SEIU employees. It's about 80 positions. I think that's important and something we look forward to seeing. Yep, great. Okay, great. So with that, gentlemen, do I have a motion to approve this merit increase? Uh, move to approve a merit increase of 2.5% for Chief James McIsaac. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, Chief, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate your ongoing service for our town and um, look forward to our continued work together. Thank you. Welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you, Sean. Okay. Um, wow.
not quite on time, but 8.30 seems early, you know, considering the marathon meetings we've had. So we have a number of committee appointments to make, but I think we'll go fairly quickly. No. Do we need to put those on the screen? I will do that. And um, then after that, we will um, approve a number of minutes. We'll listen to see whether we have any liaison reports. Approved minutes, and then we'll we'll end the, end the evening uh, by going into the executive session to have an ongoing discussion about um, uh, our collective bargaining <laughs> with our, our unions and within town. So with that the first committee we have is the energy committee. Uh, yeah, these uh, are these are pretty good shape. If you want yeah, me to agree, yeah. yeah. I mean, we have uh, uh, Mr. Kitch resigned. Um, Ms. Thank Allen you, Mr. Kitch. Resigned. Yeah. So are we, did we already accept those? No. Uh, no, so I think we have to accept the uh, print. All right, I move, I move that we accept the resignations of Francesca Kitch and Ad Adrian Allen from the Energy Committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adam Dash, aye. And then we've got reappointments of uh, Marty Bittner, Klaus Becker, and Greg Piotrowicz through uh, J June 30th, 2025. I would move we reappoint those three. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adam Dash, aye. And we have new appointments to fill the vacancies that we just accepted. And the recommendations from the chair are Eliana Lesser for a one-year term to June 30th, 2023, and John Coulterman for a term ending June 30th, 2024. I would note there was one other applicant um, who, uh, who was there, but that, that applicant, I think, um, let me just grab the name here was uh oh, there was an applicant andrew polson who actually is for what had a good um choice for disability access commission where we do have a need as well so maybe that person could but you expressed an interest uh andrew expressed an interest in that so okay so i think that would be a good per good okay i agreed on that yeah so i would move that we appoint um the eliana lesser for term ending june 30 2023 and john coltman for term ending june 30th 2024 in the energy committee and uh, just for clarity, so Adrian Allen's term, uh, oh, I see it, it, it runs out next year. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it's a one year old. So we, um, Eliana, Eliana Lesser will complete that term of Adriana Allen, correct? That's right. And then we'll consider a reappointment of. Well, she's a she's a young person, a student, and my guess is the one year probably is about right. Yeah, probably enough. So, okay, we'll we'll have to fill that, that full term next year. Okay, great. Okay. All right, do I have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Dash, aye. All right, thank you, Adam. Uh, a cable television advisory committee. We have um, one per, one re one, members, one, one member up for reappointment, Mark Carthy. Yeah, move that we reappoint Mark Carthy uh, for three year term expiring June thirtieth, twenty twenty five. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adam Dash, aye. Okay. Um, Council on Aging. So, yeah. These are all reappointments. Go it's ahead. all reappointments on here uh, for um, uh, Andrea Pascal, Marianne Scali, Joel Samuels, Nellen Sullivan, all for terms expiring June 30th, 2025. All in favor? I move approval. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adam Dash, aye. Yep, great. Cultural Council. Uh, these are all reappointments as well. Uh, there's one person who does not want to be reappointed. We'll need to fill that, but we do not have uh, enough applicants to fill that slot, but we do have enough to fill these for. So Vicky- Jenny, Jenny Angel, is that um, Jenny yes. Angel has, the, yes. has whose term expired this June has decided not to be reappointed. Thank Correct. you for your and service. Correct. We, yes, yes, of course, but we do not have enough people to reappoint her, to fill her slot, but we do okay. have the ability to reappoint Vicky Amalfitano, Evelyn Corsini, Millie Ron, and May Yi, all for terms expiring June 30th, 2025. Do I have a motion for that? Yeah, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Adam Dash, aye. Housing Trust, Adam. Yep, the Housing Trust, uh, we have uh, two reappointments and one new appointment. Uh, so this is going to be a point for Judy, reappointment of Judy Fines and, um, and Rachel Heller to a term expiring June 30th, 2025. I have a second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adam Dash, aye. And then there's a new appointment. Mark Kagan 
uh, to fill the slot that was vague, that was left by Judy Singler, which expires June 30th, 2025. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Dash, I would note Judy Singler is not seeking reappointment, and we do thank her for her service. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Served for a number of years on housing trust. Okay, um, great. And then finally, the Community Preservation Committee. I think we only have one action here. Right, and this is to reappoint Elizabeth Dion, uh, who's the chair, uh, for a term expiring June 30th, 2025, as the select board appointee. As A, a select board appointee. We have three appointees, right? I mean, we um, have two. We have two plus one of us, right? No, we have three. I'm sorry. You are great. Right, we serve. And then we've got three appointees, yeah. Okay, great. So do I have a motion to reappoint Elizabeth Dion? Yes. Second? Yes. All in favor? Yeah. Oh, I am definitely. Aye. Aye. Great. Okay, that was quick, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, all right, do we have any liaison reports? Not since the other day, no. <laughs> Meeting of the Capital Endowment uh, Committee the other day that I was not, not able to attend. Okay. Um, anything from you, Adam? No. Uh, no, not, not in the last week or so, no. <clears throat> no uh, what's the, uh, there's been some action, if you bear with me, gentlemen, for a moment, with the Community Path um, um, Project Committee. Yes. There's been a number of emails and meetings set. Where are they, are they uh, approving uh, phase two? Uh, so they're currently working on an RFP yeah, for okay. a designer for phase two. And they're working on that to get that out on the streets so someone okay. can respond. Do we know, and I should pay attention to this as well, I know we got 25% design comments from the MBTA, right? Mm -hmm. Did we not? Or Mass Drive, excuse me. And we're still working through those, as you want Yes, we met with the, uh, a member representative from NICHE uh, at their last meeting, and they were going through some of those comments. Okay. The hope is to perhaps have a, for Mass Drive, to have a 25% design meeting with our community sometime late this year? Yes, that okay. is the plan. All right. Okay, uh, we have three sets of minutes. Um, June 13, 2022, executive session. June 18th, regular meeting. June 18th, executive session. June, July 25th, sorry, July 20, July 18th, regular meeting. July 18th, executive session. July 25th, regular meeting. And July 25th, executive session. So I did receive some red lines from both of you. Uh, but let's do June 30, 13th first. And June, is, yeah, June 13th was the one that were blanks in it from before that have since been filled in. So I'd now right. move, move approval June 13th, 2022 executive session minutes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Madam Dash, aye. Okay, July 18th. That's amended um, by both Roy and I. They're fine. Yeah, Roy I read through the amendments. I'm fine with them. I read through your edits. I'm fine with them. Do I have a motion to approve the July 18th? 2022 regular minutes as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And um, the July 18th executive session minutes were also. Um, they're fine as is. Yes. Amended. I was fine with those changes. Do I have no, a motion to wait, approve? They're not, they're not amended. No comments on the executive session. Yeah, I move approval of the July 18th executive. Oh, there were not. Hang on for a moment. Yeah, there were no comments there because I got comments from both of you. So nothing amended on the executive session. Right. Okay. So do I have a motion to accept uh, to approve the July 18th, 2022 executive session minutes? Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm Dash. Aye. The July 25th regular meeting minutes were amended. Correct. Yes. That's correct. They're fine. All right, do I have, and I read them as well. I'm fine with the edits that both of you provided. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Dash, aye. And the July 25th executive session minutes? No change. No change. Do I have a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Dash, aye. Okay, and with that, um, as stated before, we have a meeting a week from today, uh, tonight, August 15, 2022, at 7 p.m. We've now agreed and decided to meet again at the end of the month of August on the 29th, at which um, the only agenda topic for that evening, um, for most of that evening, is to begin the select board discussion around um, the Collins Center report that was presented last Wednesday. And then we have two meetings scheduled at the moment in September the 12th, at 7 and the 19th at 7 p.m. So until that time, uh, we'll see you all again. And um, we are going to go into executive session and not return to 
a, a regular session. So good evening to everyone, those of you that have tuned in. Uh, we appreciate your attendance. Uh, to, we are going to executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining <coughs> or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and ISG has so declared it. And this is for all unions. So I have a motion to go into executive session for state of purpose. So moved. Second. All in favor? Roy Epstein, aye. Adam Dash, aye. Mark Floyd. Thank you all.